Okay, so last time we were with our Bayesian ninja friend. Uh, he was back home at the Bayesian dojo training because he was a little distraught that he wasn't able to catch his uh, the magical quail that he has like mixed feelings about. So he, he's back home though, and he was he's training and he did he saw the Monte Carlo um, simulation ninja star thing. So he's feeling pretty badass. Um, and his his master had been away for though for like a week, and he's wondering like where the heck is he? And then all of a sudden the master appears again, and but this time the master has both his eyes slashed, both of them scarred. So he's pretty pissed off. He's like he's like all like angry, uh, but he still levitates because that's like what he does. But he he's like really he's ticked off, and he explains to his students and to the Bayesian ninja that he ran into an ancient clan, an ancient enemy clan. And this ancient enemy clan was the Frequentesian Ninjas. <laughs> Let me write that out. Free Quin Tesian. The frequent uh, the Frequentesian Ninjas. <laughs> Google that one if you, to understand that guy. Um, but anyways, they've been feuding for a long time, and they're these smug dudes or whatever, and they they got in a big fight. And so these are the Frequentesian Ninjas, and so. The master ninja is like, like, oh man, we're, we got to fight these guys. We can't, we can't let this go down. This is an ancient battle. Uh, so Bayesian ninjas, it's time to train. And uh, the master, he has fought the he has fought the Frequentesian ninjas because like he's a, like eleven billion years old, and so way back in the day he fought them, and so he's going to teach them what their fighting style is like, and learn how to fight against it and how to fight against the ultimate Frequentesian master that. Our Bayesian ninja may or may not have to deal with in the future. We will see. Okay, so the first thing that the uh, Bayesian uh, master is going to teach the students is about the Frequentesian foot soldier. And they have three particular moves. They like to punch, they like to kick, and they like to do flying falcon punch. And uh, the Bayesian master, he knows about different fighting strategies. He knows they have different styles. And what he means is he knows that they have different state transition probabilities. Some transition from punches to kicks pretty uh, pretty frequently, whereas some go from kicks to you know flying falcon punches very easily. And so what he's going to do is he's going to provide his students with the transition probabilities, and then the students will look at how those uh, prob how that system will evolve or how that uh, fighting style evolves over time over many iterations so they can know on average if a punch, kick, or falcon punch is coming their way given the particular style that they're fighting. So um, let's just give a little description of that. So there's punching, there is kicking, and then there is falcon punching. <laughs> falcon punch. Um, and let's give that a color green. Okay, so uh, let's just go ahead and do a generic variable labeling for these different transitions, probabilities, and then uh, we could see that implemented in MATLAB. So this will be, let's just say this is, for example, A, and then there's going to be a transition probability each one of these, right? And then vice versa for all, all the other uh, three states. So since this is A, and of course it has to sum to 1, this would be 1 minus A, 1 minus A, but I can't have 1, that will sum to more than 1. So we put 1 minus a over 2, 1 minus a over 2. So basically we divide it up. So like say this was 0.33333 or 1 third, then these also be 1 third. Basically it's just trying to separate this out. So the way that will look as a matrices, is which we're going to see in MATLAB, I actually have a full like uh, diagramming of this in MATLAB, so you can see that there. But basically this is going to be a, b, c, uh, kicking, punching, I mean uh, kicking and falcon punching, this is a P kicking falcon now, P kicking falcon next, so like prime. And then this is 1 minus A over 2, same thing here. This is 1 minus B over 2, sorry, it's a little small. And then these would be 1 minus C over 2. And then the same here, and then the same here for B. And that basically will be your matrices. You'll just fill that in. We'll, you, you could see it in MATLAB. I'll have it there too. And so basically this would be, uh, in order to see how this evolves over time, how these different styles evolve over time, we can basically go to the matrices and then do the uh, raise it to the power of n, raise it to 100 or whatnot, and see how it performs and look at the probabilities of different transitions. Okay? Now, 
to deal with, so that's how to deal with the uh, Frequentation Foot Soldier. Now, the Master Bayesian Ninja tells the best Bayesian Ninja, this guy, that you will be fighting also the Master uh, Frequentation Ninja. And so this is the uh, Master Frequentation Ninja. Oh, we don't know. Uh, well, the, uh, the Master Bayesian Ninja knows, but he says, you are not ready to know these things. But what you already know, what you do need to know, is you need to know that this Master Ninja is awesome, and he could do this three-hit combo of a punch, kick, falcon punch that will knock you out forever. Like, it'll kill you or whatever. And so you can't have him land that combo. And so what he's going to teach him is what kind of uh, powers he needs or what kind of, like, counter-punching he needs in order to not get hit by that super combo or reduce the probability or at least know the probability given his ability to counter. Now, uh, the reason I'm telling you this one is because this invokes this kind of, like, memory states into the, the Markov process. And remember, I said it's memoryless, but your states can actually embody some sense of memory, and that's the reason this one's pretty good and, and useful. So let's go ahead and draw out this model. So there's punching. There is kicking. And then there is falcon punching. And if he lands that falcon punch, you're out, right? And so, of course, the Bayesian ninja wants to learn and see how good of a counter he needs. Given how good of countering he is, at, he is uh, countering those moves, we can see what is the probability that he'll end up in that falcon punch state. So, um, what that means is that this is our diagram. There's one going here. There's one coming back, one coming back, one coming back. And so, what this is saying is basically that if he, in order to get to this falcon punching state, that he had to have gone from a punch to a kick, and then to a falcon punch, and not back to the not back to the counter punch, because there's no way to get from the counter punch to the falcon punch, or from this to the kick, because all the non arrows here are zero values. Now, this actually turns out to be a regular matrices, because if as you run it, um, you'll get a non-zero iteration, and therefore it defines a regular ergodic matrices. But at the starting point, the way we have it here, um, basically what we have is that there's counter punching that could be, you know, you could punch first, and then he'll get punched back by the master ninja, and the master ninja can either get counter punched, or he could kick, and then he could either falcon punch and then knock out the Bayesian ninja, or he could get counter punched. And after the falcon punch lands, he's knocked out or killed or whatever. Maybe like this just kind of resets and he's back here. And so this is cool because it's kind of a memory system that the falcon punch can only arise as if there's a kick and then a punch beforehand in that sequence. So there's a memory in that idea, in that state. And this is something that you people use in signal analysis and things like that, like tracking how is something changing over time and like we could set some rules and some memories in that. And in hit and Markov models you see this kind of thing. And this is just kind of a nice little example of showing how memory can be built into the model. Um, so let's label this. I have a full labeling in the uh, in the MATLAB example. Let's just call this um, A, call this B, B. This is my 1 minus B then. This is 1 minus B. And then let's just say this is 1. This is always going to come back down. And then there's some like looping here, right? So this is 1 minus A. And so the idea here is that the stronger B is, the more likely a counterpunch will occur. So if we look at how big B is, then we could kind of see you know, how will this Bayesian ninja fare against the master ninja um, in terms of the steady state probabilities that they fought for years and they just kept fighting and fighting, you know, how likely is it that he's going to get knocked out? And that's what this is kind of good for, for modeling how ninjas get knocked out. So let's draw the matrices. Okay, so make it a kind of a bigger matrices. And this is going to be C, P, K, F. C, P, K, F, and then um, it's going to be 1 minus A, A, 0, 0, B, 0, 1 minus B, 0, B, 0, 0, 1 minus B, bingo, <laughs> just, oh okay, yeah, never mind, it's lame, uh, and then uh, 1 for the falcon punch. So this is your, now there are a lot of zeros here, but there is, like I said, one iteration at least where the, this is, these are all non-zero, and therefore it defines the regular matrices, and therefore we can do all the nice little computations and look at the steady state values. And so that's what we'll do in MATLAB, 
and we'll basically see how the Bayesian Ninja fares against these foot soldiers and how what he could learn about them and how their different fighting strategies are. And then we can see if he could handle the Master Bayesian Ninja and how good does he have to be to make a really low likelihood of getting Falcon punched. Um, and yeah, and after we do all these, we'll go on to different studies uh, like a Hitter Markov model, uh, Markov, uh, Markov Chain Monte Carlo, and then um, actually. Uh, do the particle filter because there's been a lot of requests for that. It's kind of a side thing, but it requires the Monte Carlo, and so that'll be uh, good to do. So we'll do all these things soon. Okay, great.